Banking and Finance Awards highlight the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes who excelled in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. Today, we are pleased to offer an award to AIA Myanmar Insurance. Since inception in 2013, AIA Myanmar Insurance has been a leading insurance company in Myanmar for both life and general insurance. We are committed to helping individuals and families in Myanmar to live in healthier and happier lives, protecting from the uncertainties of tomorrow. We aim to be recognized as your partner for life by playing a leadership role in driving social and economic development of Myanmar. As our slogan states, Partner for Life, AI Myanmar Insurance aims to ensure the country's key lifelines by providing professional and reliable service to our value customers. We reaffirm our support to the 10 principles of the United Nations Global Compact. We have been working consistently to raise the governance standards to become a role model for the rest of the industry. In working towards our goal to be a leading insurer in the country, we adhere to and embed the UNGC principles into our practices policies and operations. We have expanded our network to more than 50 branches across Myanmar. We have also received accolades over the years due to our hard work and commitment in the industry. Our strategic partnership with Sampo Japan Nippon Koa Incorporation has also enabled us to strengthen our operational capabilities. At AI Myanmar Insurance, we believe people are our greatest assets and ensure everyone has the opportunity to succeed. Partner for life. We're proud to offer AIA Myanmar Insurance an award for Best Private Insurance Company Myanmar 2019. Recently, we welcomed Managing Director Mio Min Tu to our London studios to receive the award and tell us more about the company's progress. Well, welcome to London. Lovely to see you again. This is not our first meeting, I know. Uh, so congratulations once again on another award from Global Banking and Finance. Thanks, Phil. I mean, we're very excited to be here. And of course, again in, in London. So uh, something that uh, would actually make our staff proud of. I'm sure. And I'm sure they've all been part of the team effort. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Aya Myanmar in just a moment. I'd like to ask you first of all, though, about the, the insurance industry in general in your country. How is that developing? Well, um, since the liberalization of the market in 2013 for the private insurance companies, we have really grown exponentially over the past six years. So this year, there's something very, very special happening in the market. So we are looking at five insurance, foreign insurance companies coming into the market as 100% owned. So uh, we will be seeing a lot of competition in the life space. Um, and, and for the general insurance space, we have got joint ventures coming in. So the government is doing all they can to actually ensure that we have more foreign direct investments through the financial sectors. So basically looking at insurance um, in, in Myanmar because uh, we were actually in the uh, very nascent stage of the development. Um, general insurance penetration was about 0.1% across our GDP and life insurance is so much lower at 0.01%. So we'll see a lot of development once the liberalization takes place in the, in the end of the year. Well, as you mentioned, there are obviously more and more competition. So the next question I suppose I have to ask you is, what differentiates your organization, I Myanmar, mean, uh, from, from others? Well, um, we're, we're going to be competing with the bigger boys. So uh, there are a lot of foundations set in terms of getting our strategy right. I think um, there are a few uh, areas that we are looking at. One is, of course, developing our human capacity because we've got a huge lack of human capacity in the, in, in the country. So we need to actually groom more expertise in, in, into the market. Uh, so making sure that our internal customers, which are the employees of the company, uh, as in AI Myanmar Insurance, is well versed in terms of insurance knowledge and stuff. That is the first thing. And second thing we are looking at is, of course, creating awareness across the, the general public in Myanmar, uh, because there's a huge lack of uh, interest and awareness on insurance itself. Um, not many people believe in insurance in the first place, so that is the reason why the penetration is very, very low. And we are looking at ways to actually make sure that uh, the, the, the public is aware of how insurance works and what benefits them in the longer and the, in the short, shorter term. And of course, the last of all, what we are trying to differentiate is, of course, in terms of innovation. We want to actually make, uh, make use of innovation to ensure that insurance is simple and accessible for, for the people in, in Myanmar. Yeah. 
You mentioned there about not many people are convinced initially about insurance. So how do you go about convincing them that it's a good thing to have? Well, so it's always very difficult. You see, you're selling a piece of paper and, and making a promise. So in, in an emerging country like Myanmar, it is still very difficult. And also because of religious belief where, you know, not all bad things should happen, uh, but bad things happen. So we try to edu educate them and, of course, create awareness through different examples. Um, I mean, it is easy to actually create awareness in terms of general insurance uh, on, on the public. But for life, it is still very much of a uh, difficulty because uh, not many people believe in bad things happening to them. So, so it's always a difficult... So th there's an element of superstition sometimes. Yes, of course. Traditional uh, superstition. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's interesting. I, I, I also wanted to ask you about some of the more modern and, and high-tech operations that you provided. You were one of the first companies to actually provide a digital platform. Tell us how that works and how successful that has been. Well, uh, the, the digital uh, journey has uh, started somewhere around 2017. This is more of getting our strategy right in terms of making sure that our backend platforms are set in a good foundation, basically because we need a huge and, and stable core system backend to support whatever front end applications that we provide in the, in the near future. So this is the near future that we have arrived where I think the competition is going to be very, very intensive in the next five, ten years. So we have got a good core system backend. We are the first insurance company to actually develop and embark on a digital platform backend. And right now we are looking at more um, like in line with our strategy of making sure that insurance is simple and accessible. So we are coming out with mobile applications, we are coming out with new channels through selling through banks. So we have a lot of sales applications coming up for our, our sales agents. We are looking at portals for, for customers where they are able to assess their policies online. So making sure that this is easy, it is actually not an easy thing. Yes, it's not easy for you, but presumably the idea is to make it as easy as possible for yeah. the client. Yeah? Yes. And let's expand on that. How do you actually go about making sure your clients actually get the best possible service and make the best possible use of you, your work? Well, I think one of the reasons when we actually did some studies, one of the reasons why people are not interested in insurance is that it is not simple as it is, and it is not easily accessible. So we have to go to insurance offices, branches to just physically buy insurance products, which might be uh, cheap. So uh, we're trying to actually make it accessible for them. Uh, one of the reasons why we have actually embarked on this digital platform is that we are actually trying to expand it through our sister company, AR Bank. So we've got a bank within our group where a lot of policyholders uh, are able to actually just walk into the bank, bank branches, which has got bigger network than us. And of course, through digital platform, our, our agents are able to sell uh, the policies and they have probably, within 24 hours, a customer will receive an email of a policy that covers them for the, for the rest of their life. So a lot of easy underwriting, a lot of accessibility actually gives them um, the, the, the awareness, the interest on insurance itself. Now, uh, looking at uh, the development of the industry as you were talking about earlier on, what would you say were the challenges and indeed opportunities now as, as, as the industry expands bit by bit? Well, one of the first challenges that we face is of course intense competition because we are, we're looking at different players in the market who come from different countries with a lot of experience. Um, so one, one of the things is actually to differentiate ourselves from, from foreign players uh, and although it is it is not a difficult task because the foreign insurance players will have to also get a no local know-how knowledge and the brand itself, we are more established in our own markets. But having said that, uh, the, comp the competition in terms of innovation, the technology, the know-how expertise, these are where they have more advantage in. So as a local company, we'll have to actually build our own resources, um, actually try to actually have more uh, innovative ways of competing them. And the second challenge that we are, we are looking at is, of course, uh, regulation. I think uh, regulation has to evolve over time because we've always been in a very closed and, and isolated uh, economy away from others. And, and what I believe is that with the move that government has taken up in terms of liberalizing the market, uh, it, it will go a way forward in, in making sure that regulation becomes more robust, supporting both the local players and, of course, the foreign in insurance companies. The third is, of course, on um, the, uh, the point that I've mentioned on, on creating awareness among the locals. 
So it, it serves as both the challenge and 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 an opportunity because um, there's a huge lack of interest and awareness in the market, which of course makes it interesting for foreign insurance companies coming into the market. Of course, so with the entry of foreign insurance companies, I think the awareness will probably be exponential in terms of growth. So a lot of people will be interested, and in, in the whole probably country and city will be blasted with banners, posters, billboards. So this will eventually create awareness, and which is good for everyone in the market. And going on along those lines, of course, obviously the, the country is developing uh, now rapidly after a, a lot of change. How do you as an organization give social and economic support to the nation? Well, as AI Myanmar Insurance, we as an organization, as, um, as a group, we have always been very much uh, active in social development because we, are, we have been active, we have, we have participated in different kind of um, social uh, beneficial uh, activities, so more on CSR activities that actually looks at flood victims, you say. Um, we have a lot of CSR activities in safety uh, campaigns and stuff. So in terms of, in a nutshell, if you're looking at the economic development, uh, we want to actually create jobs. We want to actually uh, nurture jobs for, for the young uh, workforce in, in Myanmar, which in turn will be able to actually uh, turn them into future leaders of the country. And of course, with the creation of jobs, that will be creating a huge domino effect into the com economy, increasing in disposable income and so on and so forth. So that is where we are looking at more of economic development. At the same time, I think we are providing a good safety net for, for, for the general mass public. So we'll be able to actually bear the cost of losses to a certain extent that would, you know, in other countries where there are major losses and if the insurance coverage is not adequate, and that's where the government funding comes in. So we, as a player in, in the market, as an insurance provider, we want to actually bear the burden of cost in terms of any catastrophic loss or disasters. So that is in a way of helping the economy uh, in, in a way. And in terms of social economy, uh, so the social development, uh, we are in a way providing safety nets. Of course, we are actually driving the country out of poverty as well. We've got a, a, about 28% of poverty, poverty in, in, the, in the country. So with insurance, I think that we need to actually educate people that this is where uh, this is a good thing for them to actually get out of poverty, not to actually spend their lives uh, uh, spending all their savings mm -hmm. in, in such bad instances. Yeah, this is where we are coming from. And because of the work that you're doing in that direction, obviously you continue to expand and grow. What are your plans for the future going forward? Well, I think uh, we've, we've made a right uh, direction uh, strategy in terms of investing in technology last uh, two years ago. So we've got our core system up and right now what we are looking at is of course enhancing our capabilities into the front line where we are actually translating whatever we have in digitally back end to have mobile applications, sales portals and of course expansion through the branches of the bank to be able to have simple and accessible insurance products for our customers. So <clears throat> there are a few initiatives that has happened over the past 12 months. One of the things is expansion of our branches across different states and divisions in Myanmar. So we expand, uh, we were planning to expand about five to six branches yearly for the next five years. So you're basically covering all states and division by end of year four or five. Second is where we are looking at leveraging all our banks, our sister company banks, to actually leverage their branches, the customer network, to actually promote insurance in the communities that the banks are present in. The third is, of course, uh, again, using technology to actually ensure that we reach out to customers more easily. Uh, things like smaller ticket size insurance products should be actually bought through online banking, our mobile applications and stuff. So this is going to happen for the next two or three years time and it is very exciting. It does seem like it because obviously it's all part of a growth industry, isn't it? So of course that means all the time you're, you're expanding. I wish you every success with that. Thank you so much for coming to London and congratulations on the award. Thank yeah. you very much again. Lovely to Thank see you. you.